What makes a discovery incredible? Is it the material the discovery is made from? Is it its age or its size? Perhaps it's what it was used for. The truth is, there's no hard and fast rule. We simply know an incredible discovery when we see one, and we like to share them with you in videos like this one whenever it happens. There are plenty of beaches in the United States of America, but none like Papakolea Beach in Nalihu, Hawaii. That's because it's the only beach in the entire country to feature green sand. The color of the sand isn't the only thing that's interesting about it. It's also made of a semi-precious material. There are only a couple of beaches like this in the entire world, and their existence is down to a very precise and fortuitous blend of geology and chemistry. The green sand has been formed through repeated eruptions from Mauna Loa over thousands of years, creating an enormous cinder cone, which in turn created a small bay. The eruptions brought minerals to the surface that would otherwise have remained deep underground. One of those minerals is olivine, a silicate mineral that forms the basis of the green sand. Most of the ash and glass from the eruptions have been washed out to sea as the cinder cone eroded over time. But the chunks of olivine are dense and resisted the tides. There hasn't been an eruption for 10,000 years, so the material has had plenty of time to settle, and the beach is here to stay. Is Lindholm Hoje in Norisundri, Denmark a stone circle? Well, it is in a way, but it's also much more than that. This field of jagged standing stones contains circles, but it also contains lines and other patterns. Rather than being an ancient calendar of the kind that many historians suspect most stone circles to be, Lindholm Hoja is a huge cemetery that still holds the bodies of more than 700 Vikings. The first burials here actually took place in the early 4th century, long before the start of the Viking Age, but they became more frequent during the Viking era before suddenly coming to an unexplained halt in the early 10th century. The hillside location of the cemetery offers an excellent view of nearby Alborg, but the city didn't even exist when the last person was laid to rest here. It would have been nothing but open fields. The unusual patterns made by the rocks sometimes appear to be effigies of longboats, with pointed stones at each end. There's also some evidence of large fires at the site, so the stone boats might have stood in for the real thing during traditional Viking funerals. Here's a sad and striking discovery from Yukon in Canada. It's a frozen baby mammoth, and it was found in June 2022. Scientists are very excited by the discovery because the juvenile woolly mammoth is whole. It's the first whole mammoth discovery of its kind in North American history. Experts believe that the animal, which was found by gold miners in the Klondike region of Yukon, is around 30,000 years old. It's been mummified through natural processes. Only one comparable discovery has ever happened in the past anywhere else in the world, and that was in the Siberian permafrost in 2007. Scientists say that the baby is female and have given it the name Nunchoga. It means big baby animal in the Han language of the First Nations people of the area. We owe this discovery to the vigilance of one of the miners, who called out to his boss after he hit something with his bulldozer and immediately realized he needed to turn the vehicle off and take a closer look. If he hadn't, Nunchoga would likely have been destroyed and lost forever. Our next discovery has been interpreted as a sign of a forthcoming disaster by the people who found it. It's an enormous fish called an ore king, and it was found by fishermen in Arica, Chile in July 2022. The creature is an especially large kind of ore fish. This particular example is more than 15 feet long. They live at depths of more than 1,000 feet and so are seen by humans very rarely. Local superstitions, backed up a little by scientific evidence, say that ore kings come to the surface 
because of the movements of tectonic plates deep beneath the sea. So whenever an ore king is seen, an earthquake or a tsunami will soon follow. There hasn't yet been an earthquake or tsunami in Chile since the discovery, but perhaps it's still a little too early to be counting our chickens. It's also said that whoever sees or touches an ore king will be cursed, which is bad news for the superstitious fishermen. Chillingly, ore fish were seen off the coast of Japan shortly before the Fukushima disaster of 2011. Of all the things that have ever gone missing, the fabled Missing Link might be the most famous. The Missing Link is the theoretical evolutionary connection between apes and humankind, which would prove beyond all doubt that we really did all come from apes. Now, scientists in the Philippines believe they may have found it. Researchers working within Kalao Cave on the island of Luzon have found a set of 13 fossilized bones and teeth that belong to a previously uncategorized subhuman species. They've been named Homo usonesis, and despite being a little smaller than us, they appear to have shared several modern traits. The remains date back between 50,000 and 67,000 years, and so these proto-people would have lived at the same time as Homo sapiens. They were found close to butchered animal bones, which implied that this new species carved and ate meat, and also knew how to use primitive tools. A debate has now begun about whether or not this species was replaced by Homo sapiens after coming into contact with them, or whether these early hunter-gatherers were a unique and different evolutionary strand. During the 1960s, a Turkish man got the shock of his life while he was carrying out some home renovations. He knocked down a wall in his basement and found himself stepping through the hole into a vast forgotten underground city. Entirely by accident, he'd rediscovered the lost city of Derinkuyu. The city, which is wholly carved out of volcanic rock, is enormous. There are 18 different layers of caves and buildings, descending to a depth of 250 feet below the surface. Mystery surrounds its origins, but it's thought that it may have been founded by the Phrygians almost 3,000 years ago. How anybody was able to undertake such a sophisticated underground construction project back then is completely unknown. The city has been abandoned, and then rediscovered many times over the centuries, having once provided shelter for early Christians fleeing persecution from Roman soldiers. Stone shafts that run from the lowest levels to the surface provide light and oxygen, while enormous rolling stone doors mean that nobody could get in unless the people inside allowed it to happen. In 2017, Eric Rintamaki, a geologist and resident of Michigan, USA, discovered a new kind of rock called euperlite. The strange stones are mostly made up of cyanite rock, a substance similar to granite, but they look nothing like granite because of the bright orange glow that seems to emit from them. The glow is down to a fluorescent substance called sodalite. It looks orange to the naked eye, but when exposed to ultraviolet light, it turns yellow. The sodalite can form almost any pattern in the stones, from spots to stripes and galaxy-like whirls and spirals. No two stones are alike. The only place in the world they are known to occur is Michigan's Lake Superior coast in the Upper Peninsula, where you'll find them scattered across the eastern beaches between Grand Marais and Salt St. Marie. As for how they came to be in this location and why they are not found anywhere else, nobody really knows. It's been speculated that they came south from the Coldwell Alkaline Complex in Ontario via continental glaciation before finding their way into Lake Superior. But if that were the case, we'd expect at least some of them to still be in Ontario. In May 2022, a man out walking on a beach in Ireland found a strange creature washed up. He took pictures of it and then turned to the internet for help identifying it. Despite keeping his name and the precise location of the beach a secret, the story made the national news in Ireland. Members of the public struggled to identify the creature, but 
so did scientists. Before anyone had a better idea, it had been nicknamed the Forbidden Churro. While it might look like something from a science fiction movie, the most likely explanation is that it's a greater pipefish. That's the most common theory of marine life experts who've studied the pictures, although it's also been speculated that it might be the tail of a sea scorpion, part of a stingray, or maybe even a badly dehydrated needlefish. Despite their name, needlefish tend to be thicker than the creature we see here. Pipefish belong to a subfamily of smaller fish connected to the sea dragon and seahorse families, and tend to be small. But it's not unheard of for them to grow up to 18 inches long. This one appears to be even longer than that. Asteroids come in all shapes and sizes, but astronomers had never seen one that looks like the celestial body that's now known as Cleopatra prior to September 2021. The unusually shaped 160 mile long asteroid has been compared to a gigantic dog bone and is currently part of an asteroid belt orbiting the Sun between Mars and Jupiter. Cleopatra might not be enormous by the standards of some asteroids, but it's large enough to have two tiny moons in orbit around it. According to Frank Marchish, an astronomer at the SETI Institute in Mountain View, USA, there isn't another object in our solar system like it. Astronomers first noted an unusual looking object in the asteroid belt around 20 years ago, but it wasn't possible to gain detailed images of Cleopatra until far more recently. We also now know that it has a porous structure and a metallic composition, which means it was most likely formed when material reaccumulated after a colossal impact, perhaps even another asteroid hitting another celestial body. Its moons might even have been created by material that's escaped from the surface of the asteroid as it rotates at a near critical speed. So much has happened since November 2020 that it already feels like a very long time ago. For that reason, you might have forgotten about the metal monolith that turned up in the red desert of Utah and captured the attention of the whole world. While it initially seemed like the monolith had appeared overnight, a subsequent examination of Google Maps proved that it had been standing since at least October 2016. As soon as it was noticed, it disappeared again, before eventually ending up in the hands of the U.S. Bureau of Land Management. The mystery surrounding the Utah monolith prompted literally hundreds of copycats, with several other U.S. states and many European and South American nations eventually getting monoliths of their own. None of the copycats attracted as much attention as the original. The origins and initial purpose of the monolith remain unknown. All we know for sure is that it was smooth, well-made, 12 feet tall, and made of a material that kept its shine despite four years in the desert. There have been suggestions that it might have been erected by John McCracken, a minimalist conceptual artist who once lived in the area, but the deceased artist's family think it's unlikely. Returning to the topic of amazing discoveries in outer space, astrophysicists announced in July 2022 that they think they've finally pinpointed the source of high-energy cosmic neutrinos. They were previously considered to be one of the universe's great mysteries, but it's now thought that they come from a series of linked galaxies containing blazing hot nuclei known as blazars. The objects, scientifically known as pivotron blazars, are extragalactic neutrino sources and function as cosmic ray accelerators. Neutrinos have a mass of almost zero, are electronically neutral, and interact with almost nothing else in the universe. That's why they're nicknamed ghost particles. Despite being almost impossible to observe, they're among the most abundant particles in the known universe. Normal neutrinos are produced by radioactive decay, for example, the byproducts of nuclear reactions that happen inside the Sun. High-energy cosmic neutrinos are a million times more energetic than any neutrinos produced by our Sun, or even the neutrinos produced by any known supernova. They interact with so little that by using modern technology, 
we've been able to trace them back to their source because they travel in an almost perfectly straight line. In the case of the neutrinos that were studied in July 2022, those straight lines took us back to the nucleus of a huge galaxy with an active supermassive black hole at its center. In the summer of 2019, a farmer named Tom Giddens felt his plow strike something solid when he was working in his field in Sampson County, North Carolina, USA. When he got out to investigate, he found this battered, heavily eroded stone face. He immediately knew he was out of his depth, but understood that he might have discovered something historically important. That prompted him to get on the phone and call in the experts. But unfortunately, the experts he spoke to didn't know much more than he did, and they still don't. The carving is large, almost two feet across from ear to ear, and closer to three feet from the top of the head to the chin. It's the fact that it's made from sandstone that makes it so hard to date. The substance erodes very quickly because it's soft, and so this could be as comparatively recent as a century old. Or it could be more than 1,000. Archaeologists might be able to offer a better guess if the design was familiar, but it isn't. Nothing like this has ever come out of the ground in North Carolina before, nor anywhere near it. It might even be the work of an ancient fraudster. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!